Hi, I'm JT Tadara. And I'm Isaac McMillan. And today we're going to be talking about the NL West and the NL West rumors. So first up, we have the uh, the Shohei signing to the Dodgers. How do you feel about Shohei Otani on the Dodgers? And how do you think he's going to do with the Dodgers? And and how do you think the Dodgers are going to do in general? You know. Uh, well, I'm a Padres fan, so I'm not really happy. But Shohei can't pitch until 2025, and all he could do is just DH and hit. So okay. it's still good for them because they yeah. signed 10 years. But they have to pay him after those 10 years because he deferred the $70 million a year and only is making $2 million a year right now. Yeah, so do you think he's going to be good as a DH for them? or? Yeah, if he, could, if he just focuses on hitting these next two seasons, I think he'll be a great hitter. Yeah, he I, is. also another so. big part of this, I think he has to stay healthy. Yeah. And um, if he stays healthy, I think he'll be good for the team. Yeah. Um, how do you think the Dodgers are going to do this season, uh, including Shohei? I think they're going to make the playoffs, have a good run, but I don't think they're going to win the World Series. All right. So the Dodgers did make another big signing on Tyler Glass now. So yeah. how do you feel about how do you feel about the Glass now signing? And um, do you think he's gonna perform how they wanted him to perform? Um, he's a good pitcher, and they got Manny Margot or Manuel Margot, and Tony Glasnow was already a very good pitcher, so. Now that he's going to be with L.A., I think he's going to be, like, super good now. Yeah. And the um, Dodgers can make anyone good. So. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to have a, honestly, a decent season. Um, I think he's got, he's honestly better with the Rays. I think it's yeah. a better fit for him. Um, I think the Dodgers fans are going to be too hyped about him. And he's honestly just going to – not do what as much as they wanted him to or as they expected him to yeah but overall he's still gonna have a good season and he's gonna perform really well with the dodgers mm -hmm. uh he's gonna play a huge role yeah but uh honestly i don't really like it because i am a padres fan yeah but i think it's gonna be good for the dodgers just not as good as they wanted it to be yeah and, i don't think he's gonna have a great season yeah. but he's still gonna perform and on the Manuel Margot, um, I don't think he's going to be an everyday player, but if, let's yeah. just say, one of their outfielders needs a break, uh, you can always put in Manuel Margot, mm -hmm. and he's a good player to rely on. All right, next team, San Diego Padres, uh, my favorite team. So one of the biggest news uh, this whole offseason is Soto going to the Yankees. How do you feel about that? Um, well, I'm not really happy, but I'm not really that mad because show or Soto, he he wasn't really doing what he did in uh, Washington for us, and he he came alive very good in the end of the 2023 season, and yeah, I don't think he's like all although that good for us, and then I also heard that uh Randy or Rosarena might. Be a blockbuster trade to the Padres. Yeah, that's the news that they've been that they've been talking about. Uh, my opinion on the Juan Soto trade is it's kind of sad to see him go. Such a big name. Um, mm -hmm. The only problem is he took up a bunch of salary, and he didn't really perform how we wanted him to. But on the last half of his season with us, he did he did really good. And he was honestly one of our best hitters in the last half of the season. But uh, it is what it is. He got traded. We uh, freed up some salary cap. And in the Juan Soto trade, the Padres got some prospects. And how do you feel about the prospects we got? Um. Yeah, I think they're pretty good prospects. I know we got... Uh, we got uh, catchers, I forgot his name, and a bunch of good pitchers like Michael King. So hopefully they get called up soon and could do very good. Yeah. Uh, so here's the names that the Padres acquired from the Yankees in the Juan Soto Trent Grisham trade Michael King, Johnny Brito, Randy Vasquez, and Drew Thorpe. 
And lastly, a catcher, Kyle Higashiaka. Um, hard name to pronounce there. Don't really know if I said it right. I'm sorry if I didn't say it right. But um, So Michael King, great pitcher. Uh, started off as relief. Yankees needed a starter, and they relied on him, and he did his job. He's going to be a huge part of the San Diego's rotation. Johnny Brito, another guy who you can rely on. Uh, gives your bullpen depth, and honestly, not the best relief pitcher in the whole game, but you can rely on him. He's going to get you an inning or so. Randy Vasquez, another good reliever, and mm -hmm. Drew Thorpe, a uh, starting pitcher. Um, I don't. Uh, apparently, Padres stated that they are going to be using him in their rotation, but. I'm not 100% sure on that, so we might see him this year. We might not see him, but the catcher, haven't really heard too much about him. Just hope he produces, and hopefully the Padres have a good season after losing Grisham and Soto in this trade. Um, another uh, move. How do you feel about Mike Schilt getting hired as Padres manager Ooh, and firing um, Bob Melvin? So Bob Melvin, in general. yeah, Bob Melvin left to the Giants. So honestly, going against Bob Melvin is going to be fun to watch. And Mike Schilt has already been paired up with AJ Preller, I believe. They've been together before. So I think they've already had some good chemistry together. We will see how it works out. But honestly, uh, the Padres have a lot of star players like Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, Xander Bogarts. Hassan Kim is uh, becoming a star. And... Uh, Mike Schilt, he's a like fiery coach. He will yell, and I think it's going to be a perfect fit for the San Diego Padres because when you have all those star players and they all want to be leaders, um, it, it could be dangerous at times, and Mike Schilt is going to be the guy to kind of balance it all out. Yeah. Um, also, another move the Padres have made is trading Matt Carpenter, who takes up a lot of salary, just like, the gas in California takes our money. Yep. So, uh, honestly, I like this move a lot. Matt Carpenter um, to the Braves for some prospects. The prospects really haven't heard of. Um, but, again, freed up salary cap, which is really, really good. And we got more prospects. How do you feel about the Matt Carpenter trade? Uh, I mean... Mark, Matt Carpenter wasn't a day one starter from the beginning. Yep. He was supposed to be our starting first baseman and um, mm -hmm. DH every single game, but it ended up being Cronenworth playing first, and uh, our DH was most of the time it was, um, well, we switched our DH around a lot because yeah. sometimes it was Gary Sanchez. Sometimes Matt Other Carpenter. times, yeah, Matt Carpenter. And then we also had, um, in the end, we started using Luis Camposano a lot more. Yeah, Luis Camposano, really good catcher, underrated in my opinion. Yeah. Great at, at making contact, has pretty good power, and he's decent behind the plate. I like him. All right, next team, we have the San Francisco Giants. Um, San Francisco Giants, I am not liking their team right now after, well, I'm not liking how... They kind of stole Jung Hoo Lee, a big name yeah. in the free agency, mm -hmm. coming from Japan, put his name out there. And Padres, I thought we're really going to get him. But again, he's talking to multiple teams that not all of us know about. He talked to the Giants, we know that. He talked to the Padres. Those were his two main teams he was thinking about. And he signed with the Giants. Um I think he signed for six years. I don't know, but I think it was six years, and he can opt out after four. Um, I believe that's what it was. And he honestly, he didn't have that much power, but he was really good at making contact. Um, yeah. A player you can compare him to is Masataki Yoshida. Also came from Korea, or I think either Japan or Korea. I can't remember, but you could compare him to him. Great contact player. Um, he's really good in outfield, really good range, and he has a little bit of an arm. So kind of yeah. sad the Padres missed out on him, but good for the Giants. They got a young athlete who possibly could be 
like a Haas on Kim. You never know. Um, how do you feel about Jung Hoo Lee to the Giants? Um, well, I really thought the Padres were going to sign him, but Giants came out big with him. And I we saw him in the WBC with Korea, South Korea, yeah. and he looked very good. Same with all the Japan guys. They obviously beat the USA in the finals. And, um, yeah, hopefully we get, um, we could maybe get some more like pitching. And I think this is a win for the Giants, but I think they need to make some more moves as they get further into the season. Yeah, they do need to make some more moves. And, uh, we will see how they do. They possibly could be signing Snellzilla, which could be sad. I want the Padres to sign him, but who knows? The Padres are free of some salary. Yeah. Next team, we got Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, honestly, I was sleeping on them last year, and they ended up making the World Series. Uh, how do you feel about the Arizona Diamondbacks during this offseason? Um... They're a contending team. I mean, no one predicted that it would be the Giants and, or sorry, the Rangers and the um, Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks in the World Series. They're a young team with obviously Corbin Carroll, Alec Thomas, all of them. We saw Christian Walker for a long time, and they haven't really made some big moves this season. Yeah, but you never know; they might make some more moves. If they were to make moves, uh, what do you think they're going to do? And what do you think they should do? I think they hmm, I think they might trade for Carlos Correa because Carlos Correa. they were trying to target him last season, the deadline, and they didn't come out with him. And, I mean, I heard some more, uh, what's it called, rumors that uh, they might get, um, forgot what his name was. Oh, yeah, they were trying to get Manny, Manuel Margot, but he uh, ended up going to the Dodgers this morning. Yeah, um, Carlos Correa, if they could get him. Honestly, I think it would be a good fit for them. Uh, infielder, which they're not really stacked on infield. They have, who do they have? Cattell Marte, is he infield or is he moved outfield? Uh, he does both. He's like, um, well, he's uh, utility. Yeah, but they could always use an extra middle infielder. Unlike the Padres, they have plenty. Um, also, the yeah. um, they're trying to sign or what's his name? Uh, like almost every MLB team is trying to sign Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yes, he's like that's a big good, name that yeah. we're going to get to in the end of the video. WBC and yep, he's going to make a big impact in the game. Yep. Uh, so the pitcher Yamamoto, Isaac just mentioned. We will be talking about him at the end of the video, but we're going to save him for the end. And now, lastly, in the NL West, we have the Colorado Rockies. Uh, Colorado Rockies, not the very best team, and they haven't been making moves, which I think they need to do. Um, what do you think they should do this offseason? What positions do you think they should try to go after? I mean... I don't think they're going to be a good team for the next, like, 10 years. They need to start a rebuild right now as soon as they possibly can because I know they still have Charlie Blackman in their roster. He's getting very old. CJ Crone's a free agent, so. Yeah, and CJ Crone's a free agent. I Traded think. him to the Angels last season. And um, yeah, they, missed they have a lot of older guys in their lineup, like, the the Orioles they were supposed to not be a good team until they got like all these new prospects. Adley Rutschman, yeah, Adley Rutschman, Jackson Holiday, Jackson Holiday, uh, Gunnar Henderson. Yep. And apparently Jackson Holiday is going to start for the um, Orioles next season, so it'll be exciting to see the Orioles play. And that's all I got on the Rockies. All right. Um, moves on younger last guys. question about the Rockies. Um, do how. How do you think they're going to, like, rank amongst the other teams in the MLB? Uh, well, the Padres have struggled against them in most of their regular season games last year. Yeah, I know we were just on the edge of that wild card spot in the end, 
but they picked it up too late and the Rockies were climbing up there with us. They were like neck and neck with us, just like 10 games back. So I don't think they're going to do too much better this season. I mean, I really see the Padres going a bit further, even though they have almost like zero pitching. But they just got those prospects from the Yankees, as we said earlier. So I don't think the Rockies will do that great, but you never know. You knew the Diamondbacks were going to do very good. You never know. Yep. And it is the end of the video, and we are going to be talking about Yamamoto, the Japanese pitcher, and where we think he's going to end up, and what we want him to, where we want him to end up. And how, and also we're going to be talking about how we think he's going to be in the MLB as a pitcher. So, um, let's start off with Isaac. Where do you think he's going to end up? Uh, this morning after one of my baseball games, I heard that the Red Sox and Giants made over a $300 million contract uh, offer at him. And they haven't, he hasn't signed any of them yet, but if I think he's going to go to one team, I think it's going to be the Yankees. Because the Yankees, they're going, like, almost all in. I mean, the Yankees' lineup's going to be stacked. They have Judge. They could put Soto left or right. And, yeah. Yeah, um, so the Yamamoto pitcher, really good as a pitcher, in my opinion. I think he's going to end up. I mean, I don't, like, completely disagree with him ending up on the Yankees. I think it would be a good fit. Because there are a lot of star players out there. And, um, yeah, I just think it's going to be... I think he's going to end up on a West Coast team. Uh, most likely a California team where there are a lot of uh, Japanese culture out here. Mm -hmm. um, I If he were to go to any team, I'm thinking it's either going to be between... I think it's going to be the Giants. Uh, Giants have lost uh, the opportunity on Soto, lost the opportunity on Shohei, and they were trying to get Judge. None of those happened, so they were trying to go big, and they couldn't connect on any of those big moves. So with by them missing out on all three of those players, um, the Yamamoto guy could be really big for them. And there is some good... Japanese culture out there, as you guys could tell, Jung Hoo Lee, the Korean, uh, signed out there. So um, I think he's going to end up on the Giants. Mm -hmm. As you heard, they offered him $300 million. Yeah, That's really, really good as, as he's coming in. He hasn't even played yet, although we have seen him in the World Baseball Classic. Um, he did but, great against Team USA. I mean, yeah. we, we barely hit off him. And obviously Shohei closed the game, but Shohei again can't pitch for till twenty twenty five. Yeah. Um, he has talked to the Dodgers, which I'm hoping he doesn't go to. Um, where do I want him to end up? That's that's a different story from where I think he's gonna end up. But I obviously want him to end up on the Padres. Padres have been shedding some salary, and if they can make this move, which would be really really hard, three hundred million is an offer from the Red Sox and the Giants. So we would have to either match that or top it, unless he really likes San Diego. I would really like him to end up on San Diego. And, uh, yeah, where would you want him to end up? I obviously wanted him to – I want him to end up in um, the San Diego organization. Great pitcher. Uh, yeah. Again, West Coast, I think he's going to end up signing over here. Maybe Yankees, but that's about it. And, yeah, that's all I got on him. All right. Um, lastly, on Yamamoto, how do you think he's going to do in the MLB after seeing how dominant he was in Japan? Um, I mean, he struck out most of Team USA, and... Those were most of our best guys from the MLB, so I think he's going to do great. Yeah, um, I think he's going to do, honestly, not as good as they think he's going to be just because he's going to be facing good players every single day. Um, in Japan, 
he faced players that are good, just not as good as the USA uh, MLB teams. Um, he's still going to do really, really good, just not as good as he did in Japan, which they're expecting him to be, which is really high expectations. And um, I think he's going to have a pretty good season uh, with a winning record. But um, this is the end of the video. And at, er, at the end of I just want to add one more thing is that, uh, I mean, Senga was supposed to be really good, Kodai Senga, but I haven't heard anything big from him. So you yeah. never know if he's going to do good or not. Yeah. But that True. wraps me up. All right, so at the end of every single video, it's going to be a tradition where we do um, something kind of funny or dumb. And today we have a special guest. His name is Teo McMillan. Walk in, Teo. Okay, so you guys can see he's a big nerd. Likes to play Fortnite. Today we're going to um, let him slap Isaac on the face while Isaac is mic'd up. <laughs> so uh, would you stand up, Isaac? Let's all stand up for this. Oh, shoot. Ah, all right, Taylor, take it easy on him. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> when I, oh, and that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and have a good rest of your day. Peace.